Throughout the course of the Clone Wars, much of the perspective as presented was from the point of view of the Jedi and the Republic, the noble forces of peace and prosperity who sought to stave off the imminent threat of the Separatists. The Jedi, the Clone Army, and the heroes we've come to know and love all served the Republic until the ultimate rise of the Empire. And throughout the conflict, the Separatists were framed as the threat to peace and democracy in the galaxy. But what exactly did the Separatists want? What were their objectives truly? And were they all that nefarious? And how was their once peaceful message? message, corrupted, and bent into an act of all-out war. Well today, Acolytes, welcome back to the channel and our archives. We've been expecting you. Today, we will be opening up a holocron and explore the secret tragedy of the Separatist movement lying just beneath the surface. Discuss how their ideals were actually not all that terrible in theory, and how this movement ultimately escalated into a full-scale galactic war. The key idea to note throughout this entire video is that the Separatist system didn't even want to dominate the Republic, nor did they want to overthrow the ruling Senate in any malicious manner. This was Palpatine's idea. Instead, the Separatists were composed of a group of worlds that were most located in the mid and outer rims. Before we explain exactly what the Separatists wanted, we have to go back in the era before the Separatist movement was even a thing, and explore why they were created in the first place. Before the rise of the Agenda, the Republic had a very strong industrial presence, with the inner worlds governing corporations that exploited labor from across the galaxy, doing so with systems primarily including that which would ultimately join the Confederacy. Since Separatist worlds were largely populated by non-human entities, they were more subject to xenophobia or racist behavior towards their alien populace, both by the government and the corporations that they aided. This meant that separatist worlds were more harshly treated by the very same government which should have been protecting them, and the tightly bound nature of government and business meant that oftentimes other races were disproportionately abused. Not only were they taken advantage of, but it was done without the same support that humans or inhabitants of inner rim worlds would have had, and the government turned its back on these people in need. The Republic turned their back on these people. Initially, the Separatist movement was an idea to simply secede from the Republic and form their own system of government, allowing themselves to break free of the industrial arm and be treated fairly by a new sitting governmental system. They believed that the Senate had become overridden by corruption that couldn't be easily addressed without a serious overhaul of the entire governing body, which was simply unfeasible. But initially, no member of the Separatist movement wanted to resort to violence, let alone break out into a full-scale war. The marriage between the Senate and corporations made it nearly impossible for unbiased legislation to pass, and laws set in place would support corporations before being tailored for those who were being taken advantage of by the very same businessmen. These businessmen were free to exploit non-human races without ever fearing repercussions from their government, and this led to an escalation of Separatist support. Even the Jedi had become so tightly ingrained with the political machine that they were a part of now that they were no help despite being branded as an unbiased guardian of peace and justice in the galaxy. Even though they should have stepped in to stop these corrupt practices, the Senate had their claws in deep, and the Jedi were brainwashed by political views rather than what was the correct and moral thing to do. From here, many Separatist leaders saw no choice but to leave the Republic, and the premise was to do so peacefully. The likes of Newt Gunray and the Council of Separatist leaders didn't want violence or war. They simply wanted to break away from the arm of the Republic itself, and the premise was to do so peacefully. What may surprise you is the likes of Newt Gunray and the Council of Separatists didn't want violence or war at first. They simply wanted to break away from the arm of the Republic and found their own system where they wouldn't be abused by corporations. This is not to say that individuals like Newt Gunray and the Council are good by any stretch, just that the Republic isn't either. Unfortunately for this group of largely agreeable individuals, however, the lifeblood and purpose of their movement itself was corrupted. This once noble idea was eroded by Sith intervention, which led to the ultimate downfall of the Republic and the Separatists. This mission finally made its way to the office of Chancellor Palpatine, who was nightlighting as the sinister Darth Sidious, and he found his opportunity to finally topple the Republic once and for all. From here, Palpatine began to fuel this conflict from both sides, creating more friction and making a peaceful resolution all but impossible, even though it could have theoretically been done if any other sitting Chancellor had currently been in office. 
Palpatine was able to appoint Count Dooku as the head of the Separatist movement, and the image of a fallen Jedi at the helm of this movement helped the Separatists to gain notoriety, as well as major attention from the remainder of the Republic. Had the Sith not intervened, this is a likely possibility that the Separatists could have come to a peaceful resolution and been allowed to live in relative sanctuary. As war waged on, however, Separatist leaders such as Gunray, who represented the Trade Federation, and Wat Tambor, who was the Techno Guild representative, as well as the entirety of the banking clan believed that Sidious was on their side, and they were fooled into believing that Darth Sidious truly had their best interests at heart, when in truth, he was motivated by nothing more than his own greed and the goal of the Sith. They allowed Dooku to lead their movement in the hopes that his image would help lend merit to their cause, and the two Sith could help these people escape oppression. After Dooku's death, however, Palpatine made one last promise, that being the protection of the leaders under his brand new apprentice, the newly christened Darth Vader, who would meet them on Mustafar in order to rendezvous and regroup. When Vader arrived, however, he was tasked with slaughtering the remaining Separatist leadership and shutting down the droid army rendering the Separatist movement all but dead in its tracks. Separatist worlds were then tasked with surviving the shadow of the Empire, with some being almost immediately assimilated into their ranks, while others fought back, such as what we saw in Season 2 of The Bad Batch. During the first episode, we got to see the up-close-and-personal look at the ruins of this war and one of the many Separatist worlds that tried to outrun Imperial control. Unfortunately, however, the reign of the Empire was a plague on all worlds, and no one was safe regardless of allegiance allegiances prior to the outbreak of the conflict. The ultimate downfall of the Separatist movement is exactly who they put their trust in. They put their trust in individuals such as Dooku, and even worse than this perhaps, General Grievous as the leader and commander of their droid armies. Bloodthirsty, evil men. But that does not mean that the initial inception of the Separatist movement was all that nefarious, malicious, or evil at all. It was in fact moral and just, led by corrupted men. And this is part of why I love Star Wars. Everything seems to be grey, somewhat or another. The Republic and the Jedi are not these perfect individuals that they claim and profess to be. And the Separatists are not these malicious tyrants that the Republic claims that they are. Star Wars, like our real world, is shrouded in grey. No one is all good, and no one is all bad. But that, my acolytes and friends, is the tragedy of the Separatist movement, an aspect of Star Wars that I'm so glad that they've decided to explore more in depth recently. But anyway, my friends, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on the initial desires of the Separatist movement and how the organization was corrupted? What are your thoughts and opinions on this grand plan by Palpatine? And what do you think the Republic should have done in this situation? As always, acolytes, reach out with the Force and crush that subscribe button. It is your destiny.